What's going on guys? This is Ryan Knows Tech with our technology oriented blog techandforum.us and I've got the awaited review, uh, really just a look around the early 2011 15 inch MacBook Pro. I got this in June or July, I meant to make a review right away, eventually the newer MacBook Pros came out the late, I think they're calling them, 2011 MacBook Pros. Uh, really the only thing that changed was the graphics and the processors. However, the graphics card in here and the processor in here uh, are still used in the model, in the 15 inch models from today. They're just the lower end model instead of the higher end. This is the 2.2 gigahertz Intel Core i7 15 inch MacBook Pro. They're still using that. This was the high end one. They had a 2.0 and a 2.2. So this is the higher position one. It retailed at, I believe, $14.99. This has got some upgrades on it. It has eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM from Apple. I didn't put that in myself. I just let them do it. It is much faster RAM than what I found on OWC, Newegg, Amazon, places like that, Crucial. Uh, the, the rather speed tests of the RAM are higher from Apple than anything that I've seen. Um, and I've been very happy with this computer. I've used it a lot. Uh, again, it's the quad core 2720 or something like that. Uh, the graphic is the AMD 6750, which is one gigabyte of dedicated memory. Um, and it also has the lower end graphics, the Intel HD 3000, it's 512 megs. It's really only 384 megs, but if you have eight gigabytes of RAM, it goes ahead and shares some more of that RAM, um, bringing it up to 512. Uh, so we're just going to take a real quick look around. I'm going to make another video going over the screen resolution in comparison. Uh, that's another thing I should mention. This has the upgraded resolution display to 1680 by 1050. The standard resolution is um, 1440 by 900. So this is quite a nice upgrade there in terms of resolution. It was $100 from Apple. It is not the uh, anti-glare display. It's the glossy display. I really like the glossy over the anti-glare because it has the black bezel. It, I just think it makes colors look a lot more vivid. And I really don't use this in an environment that's so light that I need uh, the uh, anti-glare display. However, if you do use your machine in outdoor areas with lots of direct sunlight, um, you probably will be better off with the anti-glare because I have used this out on my patio in the summer when we have Ohio sun, usually two to three days a year, uh, and it was kind of hard to read, but again, I don't use it outside much. But you'll see with the 15 inch, we've got the speakers on the sides. Most of you watching this video probably know a lot about the 15 inch. It's been around a long time. It's got the backlit keyboard, which is really nice, controlled here. This is my third MacBook Pro. I had a, a 13 inch 2009 and a 2010, so this is my first 15, and I am very happy with it. I made an entire separate video talking about the 13 inch versus the 15 inch in terms of portability, form factor, performance, price. Um, so check out my channel for that. I actually had my old 13 inch right here on this table and uh, that video has been up on the channel for quite some time now. Here's a real quick comparison of the 13 inch obviously on top with the 15 inch below it. It's really just going to be size and weight thickness is absolutely the same on both models. So we'll just take a look around the sides. On the left side you're not going to be surprised to see the MagSafe adapter. It's the same MagSafe that they've used for a couple years now. It's not the one that sticks out that's white. Uh, it kind of goes out to the side or the back. Over here, this is an Ethernet cord, never used it, Ethernet port rather, FireWire 800, use this all the time, it's very quick. Uh, this is your mini display port or Thunderbolt, uh, meaning that you can plug in an adapter to go to VGA, DVI, or HDMI and use a display or use a Thunderbolt hard drive like the Lacey Little Big Drive. They're pretty expensive, but they're very fast right now. Two USB 2.0 ports, I could definitely uh, enjoy a third on there, but two is all we get. SD card reader, audio in and audio out. And the last thing over here is the battery indicator light. It's an LED screen if you can even see them on the camera, but it tells you how much power you've got. The black is where you're going or the back is where you're going to see your hinge. On the right side is the optical super drive bay, which I don't actually have one in here. I took it out and put in a uh, data doubler from OWC. I have a 500 gigabyte 7200 RPM Apple hard drive in there. In the regular hard drive bay, I have a 120 gig SSD, the 6G Mercury Extreme Pro from OWC. It writes about, writes and reads around 500 megs per second, so that's very fast. And there is your uh, Kensington lock on the front, just an indicator light, IR sensor, or infrared, and your latch to open it up. And the bottom is just big piece of aluminum. I'd like to take a minute just to say real quick, these the build quality of this is just phenomenal. The aluminum unibody feels so good. It's really, really tough and rigid and freezing cold when it's out here in my sunroom in Ohio in December. 
but the build quality of these is just phenomenal. You can really feel the quality opening the display. There's no give in it. It's just really well engineered, and uh, you're, you're paying for a very high quality product, and there's no doubt that you're not getting one. Uh, I will log in. I've had so many videos about this machine on my channel. Uh, you can see the screen resolution in, in its entirety. I'm not even typing in the box. The battery, they say it's good for seven hours. If you use the integrated card, you can actually get an application that will allow you to switch between graphics cards. Right now it's on the integrated card. If I just do uh, web browsing, I always keep the screen brightness on halfway right there. Uh, it's more than bright enough in most conditions. If I'm outside or in a light room, I will go ahead and put it up all the way. And that does seem to have uh, uh, an effect on the battery, but it's not huge at all. And the backlit keyboard really doesn't take any power, it's just LATE, so don't worry about that taking power. But you can see the high-res display. I will open a Safari page and we'll load Yahoo's, the home page. Uh, you can see how well that fits. If we drag that over there, we open a new window, drag it over here. You can really view 99% of each web page if you put them side by side like that. So I went for the higher resolution display because I do a lot of video editing and it would always be nice to have uh, room on the screen to be able to see more of what I'm working with. However, the baseline 15 inch MacBook Pro and its lower resolution is definitely better than the 13 and uh, is really okay, but for 100 bucks, I love the resolution. No surprise, up here you're gonna find your EyeSight camera on this model. It is 720p high definition over the old ones, which I think were 480p. So it's a nice upgrade there. The speakers are pretty good. I'll go ahead and launch iTunes. We'll play something real quick. Um, there's two in here and they're visible uh, and they point upwards, whereas the 13 inch, they're kind of underneath and they point downwards. And it is a better sound, but honestly, I don't use these speakers too much. I'll see if I can find a song here. All right, we've got iTunes volume all the way up. We'll just control it from here. There's about halfway. I'm gonna play this song, it's heart and soul. I can't play very much of it. But uh, the bass is not real strong, but they do sound pretty decent. I'll let you listen. Turn them up all the way, see how loud it is. There's not a whole lot of, um, of, I don't know what you call it technically, but compression, I might say. When you turn it up all the way, a lot of times you lose your high or your low notes. And with these, it's not bad. Um, not like the Bose speakers that I have. Those are phenomenal, but, you know, these are decent. That's uh, the same size trackpad and, and whatnot. Uh, this machine is not at all difficult to carry around. I carry it back to school every day. It's not that heavy. Uh, it's under an inch thin. It's, I believe, 0.94, and, and this dimension here is just like 15.5 or something like that. But I highly recommend this computer. It's very fast. As I said before, I'll make another video talking about the screen resolution specifically, and another one after that sometime in the future talking about the Geekbench and the performance benchmark scores on this. I've used a couple different applications, Synbench for graphics and uh, Geekbench just for processor and CPU, well, CPU and RAM. So I'll get into those scores later on, but as I said, I really like it. It's an expensive machine, but you're getting a lot of power here. This exports 720p videos in QuickTime 10 at about 60% of the video time. So if you have a 10 minute video, you put it in Final Cut, you edit it, it takes virtually no time to render, at least from a flip video or flip ultra HD, whatever format that encodes in. Uh, it'll export that 10 minute video in just about six minutes. If you're on the dedicated card, if you're on the integrated card, uh, the export time doesn't vary, maybe really only seven minutes, so you're gaining a minute or you're losing a minute there of export time, um, taking more time to export, but the rendering time and the performance while editing seems to go way down if you're gonna use the integrated card. So I would highly recommend if you're gonna do some graphics intensive work gaming, if you're gonna run Windows on here, uh, which by the way, works very well. It runs Windows 7 better than any PC I've ever owned in terms of performance, reliability, and stability. Uh, then you will want to use the higher end graphics card in here. But highly recommend it. It's an expensive machine. You get what you pay for. Thanks for watching the review, and I'll talk to you guys in a future video. Bye bye.